Murder is one of the worst crimes that a human can commit, so let's talk about some of the people that just didn't give a damn about mankind's moral code and killed in spite of that. Jack the Ripper. Mainly taking lives in the Whitechapel district of London, he has five confirmed murders under his belt. His main target, as most of us know, were prostitutes, who were brutally murdered and mutilated, suggesting that little old Jack had surgical skills. Though his KD is kinda low, it is Jack the Ripper's ability to stay free that makes him one of the most infamous, unidentified killers in history. Jeffrey Dahmer, nicknamed the Milwaukee Campbell, makes it no surprise that most of his murders occurred in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Shout out Bucks. Having a terrifying 17 murders under his name and a Netflix series, Dahmer's main method of murder was to lure young men, mostly of color, to his apartment where he would strangle them to death, engage in sexual acts with the corpse, dismember them, and sometimes consume parts of their bodies? Okay. The main question is how was he able to get away with that for so long? Because it was evident that Dahmer was no light Yagami from Death Note, having his apartment filled with gruesome evidence including photographs of his victims and body parts stored in acid. The main reason he was able to dodge the law was because he was white. God, it must be nice. Harold Shipman. Having the very light-hearted nickname of Dr. Death, Harold's main murder playground was in Greater Manchester, England. He is said to have an absolutely gruesome 250 kill count. The way Shipman would kill people is by administering lethal doses of prescription medication, usually morphine or diamorphine, to his victims, most of whom were elderly women. Shipman's killing went undetected for years due to his position as a trusted doctor in the community, and he was only caught after a series of suspicious deaths and mishandled police investigations. That's like having the doctor who delivered my child stab puppies on the DL. John Wayne Gacy, also known as the Killer Clown, Gacy was a menace of Chicago, Illinois in the United States. With 33 confirmed murders, Gacy targeted young boys and teenagers, often luring them to his home under the guise of employment or entertainment, where he would sexually assault, torture, and strangle them. He then buried their bodies in the crawl space beneath his house. Gacy also had an alter ego that he named Pogo the Clown for children's parties, which did a 180 flip that contrasted his heinous crimes. Yeah, no kidding. You know, my mom used to be deathly, deathly terrified of clowns, and now I see the reason. Douchebag. H.H. H. Holmes. By the way, I would like to start this segment by saying we should stop giving these murderers sick-ass nicknames. Being nicknamed the Devil in the White City for his residency in Chicago, confessing to over 30 murders, Holmes the Killer was actually as smart as Holmes the Detective. Where he built a hotel equipped with hidden passages, soundproof rooms, and gas lines to asphyxiate victims. He would then dissect their bodies on surgical tables, sometimes selling their skeletons to metal Oh my god, medical schools? Holy shit. Holmes Hotel, now known as the Murder Castle, was located close to the site of the 1893 World's Fair, allowing him easy access to potential victims among fair attendees. Pedro Lopez, also known as the Monster of the Andes, again, sick ass nickname, being located in Colombia, Ecuador, and Peru, he is linked to over 300 murders. 300 murders? Anyways, Lopez primarily targeted young girls, often from indigenous tribes. Aw, oh, man, let's leave them alone, man. They've been through enough. <sighs> Which he would rape and strangle to death. And when he was done, he would bury many of his victims in shallow graves. Oh my god. I don't want to be sexist or anything, but I think I'm glad to be a man. Despite his heinous crimes, Lopez was released? He was released from prison in 1998 and disappeared, with his current whereabouts unknown. Hopefully he got eaten by a tiger or something, I don't know. Now, one of my friends really, really, really wanted to make an appearance on my videos, like he was on his knees begging, glazing me, throwing it back, all of the above. So I'm gonna leave the last murderer up to him to cover. So take the floor, Kazo. Now we have the man with probably the highest level of riz in the world, Ted Bundy. This man, nicknamed the Lady Killer for his astonishing ability to pique their interest and then kill women, was able to pull young girls by faking a disability or injury. My man really had that special ability to pick up girls. It is estimated that he had a combined 30 bodies, kills I mean. I'm sure he had plenty more of the other kind of bodies, even not counting a few goes at necrophilia. And here you are out here even scared to walk past a woman. If this man were around today with dating apps, I'm sure he would be picking up triple doubles every other weekend. Ted was able to evade capture for years because of his big old brain and is still known today as one of the greats. Well, maybe not great, but everyone knows his name, so good for him, I guess.
I hope this video taught us how to be more cognizant of the potential murderers out there and how to avoid these dangerous people, and that is to not be young or old, a woman, a person of color, or go to any hotels. I hope that you all enjoyed my video, please like and subscribe, stay safe, and I'll see you in another episode.